guys, it's Fern. So welcome to the first episode of my Learn series. And this video is about how to make law school easier. After a few years of law school, I found that there are just a lot of things that you can do to just make things a lot easier and a lot simpler. Um, it doesn't mean that you're being lazier or any way. I feel like it's just a matter of working smarter instead of working harder. Law school is a lot of hard work, but there are a few things that I've picked up personally that make everything just so much easier that I'd like to share with you guys today. Number one is relevant for first year law students. How I used to read a case in my first year of law because I didn't understand how to read cases, I'd read from the top to the bottom of the case. So I'd read all the way through and I just feel like that's not the best way to do it. So I feel like the best way for me to read a case and the easiest way to read a case is to read the facts, read the head note. You want to find out what the facts are, what the issue is. So what are they deciding on? What's the question of law that they're deciding on in the case? And then you want to figure out whether or not the judges dissented or whether or not they were in the majority. Then when it comes to the judges reasoning, most usually I will start at the very bottom of their decision and then work my way up paragraph by paragraph until things start making sense. And I know that sounds a bit silly, but usually throughout the judge's reasoning, it's it's a lot of reasoning. It's a lot of referring to other cases. So what tends to happen in some cases is that the reasoning is so long that you get completely confused and by the time you get to the bottom, you feel like you've missed all the main points. Usually judges will sum up their main points in the end after they've finished their reasoning. And so by starting at the bottom of their decision, you kind of get to the point straight away. This is not to say that the judge's reasoning isn't important. It is important, but I'm saying start at the bottom of the reasoning. So when the decision is made, when they've can reach their conclusion and work your way up. So I'm not saying skip parts, I'm saying start at the bottom because that usually means that you've got a good idea of what their decision is and why it is before you work your way up. Number two is reference correctly and reference as you go. So learning how to reference correctly is really important in law school, well at least in Australian law school. So we have a referencing guide, the Australian Guide to Legal Citation, and that includes referencing within the text and also within your footnotes and for bibliography, I believe. I've never actually done a bibliography or been required to do one. Getting across these rules is really important because it's going to help you in practice, but also you get marks taken away if you don't reference properly in the text and in your footnotes. Because there's so many of these rules, learning them in your first year and understanding them is going to save you marks and it's going to save you a lot of time. And also reference as you go. Referencing seems like a simple thing, as I said before. I think if you're in your first year of law, it can be a common mistake to reference at the end of your assignment because you're trying to get all your research out, you're trying to get it all done, you might just provide links so you can refer back to it later. But referencing takes hours. It takes hours. It can take you a whole day to reference a whole assignment. And if you do your referencing all at the end, you might make mistakes. You're not, I feel like personally, I'm not as detailed if I don't reference as I go. It does take a lot longer in terms of time, yes, but it's going to just generally save you a lot of time. Like it's going to take the same amount of time, I feel, to reference at the end than reference as you go. It takes a lot of time. Number three, learn how to study the law. So in Australia, we go straight from high school to university. And once you come out of high school, I feel like the way that you've learned how to study and how to do exams is completely different to law school, it is completely different. So it's very wise to take a book out about how to study the law. This book should include things about how to do exam questions, how to do essay questions, how to read a case, how to do mooting, things like that. 
I'll link the book that I use down below that I found really, really helpful. Because at the end of the day, studying the law and doing it correctly is just it's such a learned process and I feel like you're going to save yourself a lot of time and you're going to learn how to study smarter and correctly if you do your research about how to actually study the law. Number five, figure out how to relax. Law school is a marathon, it's not a race. And what I found is it's really important to understand and figure out how you're going to balance your life and how you're going to balance law school. And I think a big part of that is learning how much time off you need a week just to yourself to maintain your mental health, um, what things are good for your mental health, and how can you balance your studies and also the rest of your life. Your studies are going to take up a large amount of your life, yes, but I think it's important to create methods of relaxation that are true relaxation and that are going to help you de-stress and help you cope with the workload of law school. So an example of this might be catching up with friends once a week on a particular day, or it might be like I do, practicing yoga. And this makes your life easier because one, it helps you manage the stress of law school, but it's also, I believe, something that can be carried on when you start practicing, if you start practicing. I don't think that the stress is going to go down that much. And having a way of dealing with that stress and understanding what your limits are, are really important. We're not robots and it's really important to put your mental health as a priority and you can still get good grades and you can still do well and I feel like the way that you do that is by understanding at the outset that you're going to need to be able to manage your stress and be able to maintain your mental health throughout law school to do the best that you can. Number four is having two sets of notes for your exams. So keep in mind I'm referring to my experience in Australian law school and I'm also referring to open book exams. What I find really helpful, and this was advice given to me in one of those books I borrowed at the beginning of law school about how to do your research properly and how to do exams properly, is to have one set of notes that has all your tutorial information, all your readings, everything, and have a contents page referring to all that information. So it's pretty much a big, big summary. And then having a second set of notes that is particularly focused on how to answer an exam question. So in this set of notes, instead of having a bunch of information about absolutely everything, every single detail, it's particularly focused on the issues that may come up during an exam. So in the exam, usually what your lecturer is testing is to see if you can identify certain issues and then apply the law to those issues. And so by setting out your second set of notes in an issue law format, you've kind of cut out a huge chunk of work for yourself. So using my trust notes from last semester, just to explain properly, because I know what I'm saying could be quite confusing. So here I have scenarios, but to me, these scenarios are issues. So. What I'm asking here in scenario one is what would happen if a person used stolen money to make a deposit for a mortgage and that house increased in value? So what I have done in this scenario in terms of my notes is that I've given two situations of options for the possible um, plaintiff. So they could go for a personal or they could go for a proprietary claim. So in the exam question, I go, okay, if it's a personal claim, these are the two things that might occur. As you can see, I didn't write many notes underneath them because I have notes later on. And this question really is more about tracing. And so tracing is a method, but it's really a way to make a proprietary claim. So under proprietary claim, 
I've made a general statement of tracing law because in the exam, I would need to have that general statement of what tracing law is. So as you can see, I've saved myself a bunch of time by pre-writing what I would write in the exam exactly um, if this issue was to arise. And so I've said a general statement of tracing law and then I've had a general statement of the law of mortgages and stolen money. And so I've said exactly what I'm going to say. And so how this makes your life easier in law school, because if I just had my summary notes, I wouldn't have this pre-made statement of law. I would have to look at my summary notes and write this from scratch in the exam when I really didn't have to. So by predetermining what possible issues might arise in the exam, I feel like you're covered for a majority of it in terms of what you need to write. So I'm going to finish the video there. That will be part one because there's a lot of audio to get through. There's 20 minutes worth of audio. Um, so look forward to part two. I hope you enjoyed part one. Chuck me an email if you have any questions or a DM on Instagram. Um, I hope you guys are having a lovely week and I'll see you soon. Bye.